How do we keep our sons' hearts, our daughters' hearts, young men and young women's hearts from folly in the midst of a day and age like this one? Good opening. When I look around and see so many that allegedly endorse democracy, but also wanting to disenfranchise voters and decertify elections if they don't win, I agree with you. As I see people claiming to serve a loving God, also saying that anyone who doesn't agree with them should burn in hell. I too ask, how do we steer clear of such folly? The title of this video intrigued me. This is why you never mock God. I mock God all the time. The preacher featured in this portion of the video is Vodi Bakum. The channel I got this video from is called The Gospel of Christ and is the product of John Henry. Do Bakum and Henry actually have a reason that I should stop mocking God? Let's find out. Let's have a chat. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me and especially to my patrons and channel members. I am frequently warned by believers that I had better not mock God or I will be sorry. To which I reply that if God doesn't like what I have to say, let God say so. But since I never actually hear from any gods, we will have to settle for why John Henry thinks that God doesn't like being mocked. Uh, Mr. President, this is my 221st day of publicly transitioning. God and, love you. Uh, thank you. I am extremely privileged to live in a state that allows me access to the resources I need, and that decision is just between me and my doctors. How do we how do we do that when when we're making disciples in the midst of an age that is characterized by absolute folly? This is not where I was expecting him to go. So the folly Bakum is complaining about. Is the transgender community? I hope this isn't his entire point. There is certainly enough going on in the world that I think believers should just let this be. I mean, the transgender community is a very small segment of the population. Why can't you just take a live and let live attitude? If anyone is mocking God, it isn't this group that just wants to live and have the right to be their authentic selves, the way they see that God made them, if they believe in God which many of them do. If this is the way that God made them, who are you, Vody Bachman, to claim that he didn't? Has God personally spoken to you and said that being transgender is folly? There certainly aren't any verses in the Bible that say this. How about focusing instead on how people that call your theology and your religion the bullshit that it is? Those of us doing that are mocking your God, not the transgender community. But we're living in the middle of it. It is insane, it is irrational, it is ridiculous. A lot of people are really confused about gender identity in these times, and it's good for us to have these conversations so people open their minds and relearn and unlearn to what we've been taught. I don't think he sees what he has done here. Addison has the answer to MacArthur's problem. The only complaint he has is that he thinks it's irrational and insane to be transgender. Addison has the perfect answer. Open your mind and learn. Learn what other people feel and experience. Maybe then you will see that they are not mocking your God. Few of them say anything about your God. I hope that this video is actually going to address someone that really is mocking your God. Let's get to the mockery. You have a president who is a Roman Catholic and who is advocating the insanity at the third level of divine judgment as if this is normal. I have no idea what the third level of judgment is. I looked it up. I found nothing. I looked it up with MacArthur's name added to the search and still nothing. When did judgment get levels? This isn't in the Bible, nor is it in any sermon or paper that I could find. Or MacArthur talks about this. We continue to speak out about the basic fundamental rights of all human beings. It's outrageous, and I think it's immoral. The trans part's not immoral. We go from sodomy to homosexual to gay. We go from pedophile to minor attracted person. 
I call straw man. This is a fringe group of sick people that want to normalize this, but this is not a part of the LGBTQ community. The LGBTQ community condemns all non-consensual sex. Minors are incapable of consenting to sex, and thus sex with minors is condemned by the community. This is fear-mongering by the religious right and the Christian nationalists to try to get the right-wingers to fear the LGBTQ community without cause. Do you think states should have a right to ban gender-affirming health care? I don't think any state or anybody should have the right to do that. As a moral question and as a legal question. I just think it's wrong. I applaud Biden for this statement. Dr. and I use that term liberally here, Oz recently made a statement at a debate that he believes abortion should be up to a woman, her doctor, and the state legislature. I was baffled that no one questioned this. Once a state legislature rules on a woman's right to an abortion, the woman and her doctor no longer have any say in the matter. He tried, successfully it seems as there was no pushback, to indicate that he was compromising. He wanted all those parties involved in the decision. But really, people who can become pregnant, how many of you want your state legislative representative accompanying you to your doctor visit to have a voice in your medical care? All in favor, say aye. Yeah, that's what I thought. What Oz really is proposing is that states where the legislature wants to control women's health care, he's fine with that. For me, in Alabama, that means a group of all white men get to decide what medical care my doctor can provide for me. In more liberal states, then a woman and her doctor can decide on her medical care. The state legislature doesn't belong in the exam room. This is personal between me and my doctor. As to health care for the transgender community, the situation is even worse. My legislature tried to ban psychological counseling for transgender children. Fortunately, the American Medical Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, and the American Psychiatric Association all sent representatives to tell our legislature what a terrible idea this was and that such a law would cause great harm and lead to the deaths of many children. At least my state took out the prohibition on counseling. But the following year, they passed the bill criminalizing other medical care for transgender children. The legislators were able to convince the public that this is what is best for children and parents and doctors are not acting in the best interests of children. So the legislature needs to step in. Despite all three major medical organizations telling them that this is not the case, study after study shows the benefits to children who need such care being able to get it. But too many members of the public don't believe the studies. Why not? Because they were raised hearing Ken Ham and Kent Hovind tell them that people who don't put the Bible first don't know how to do science the right way with a Bible in one hand and looking to confirm what the Bible says. They tell you that the Bible says that one cannot be transgender. It's a delusion. Any gender-affirming care just feeds that delusion. So they disregard what the medical community tells them, because the medical community believes in evolution. They believe in millions of years. They believe in following the observable science wherever it leads, even if it leads to rejecting what the Bible says. But in this case, it doesn't even do that. The Bible is silent on being transgender. The conservatives really have to stretch to try to find their ideas in the text. The best that they can come up with is that God made them male and female. But that doesn't even say what they want. They pretend that it says male or female. God makes you one or the other. It doesn't. It says male and female. This could mean all people are made non-binary and are free to choose to identify with the gender of their choice. So for anyone out there still wondering why I do this, why I make these videos mocking your biblical interpretations and theology, this is why. Because your theology causes real harm to real people. 
teaching that the Bible trumps everything, including reality and observable, testable scientific conclusions, leads to people doubting the medical professionals that have the studies that show what is currently the best medical care available. Most transgender people don't want to be transgender. They want their bodies to match the gender they identify with. Maybe one day this will be possible. Until then, we do the best we can with the medical care we have to alleviate the dysphoria that results from being in a body that doesn't match your identity. Banning such medical care helps no one. It just feeds the delusion that banning medical care can usher in the theocracy the right desires. And this is the real and only delusion here. Man, talk about calling good evil and evil good. I rest my case. This preacher is demonstrating exactly what I was talking about. He refutes the medical science, not with studies, not with evidence, not even with a claim that the Bible condemns this, just that he does. He claims this is evil, but he has no reason for you to think this way. Just trust him, because he knows more about medicine than your doctor. What education does Bachman have? He has a BA in Christianity and Sociology from Houston Baptist University an MDiv from Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, and a D ministry from Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary, with additional postgraduate study at the University of Oxford. No medical education. None. At all. And he wants you to get medical advice from him and disregard the doctors that spend 11 years plus studying medicine. There's something else in his educational credentials that don't quite ring true. He claims here that he was raised in a secular home and never heard the gospel until he was in college. But he has his undergraduate degree from a Baptist university. If he had never heard the gospel growing up, why did he choose to go to a Baptist university? It is possible that after he got saved, he transferred from the secular institution that he was attending and then went to the Baptist University. Wikipedia clears up the issue. He was at New Mexico State and then Rice playing football as a tight end. He then transferred to graduate at Houston Baptist. But in my mind, this makes his education all the more sus. He was at Rice, a nationally ranked school with excellent academic credentials. But he didn't graduate from Rice. Instead, he graduated from Houston Baptist now Houston Christian University, a school ranked 64th in the region out of 120. Their overall score with the U.S. News & World Report is just 40 out of 100. Why go from a nationally ranked school with excellent academic credentials to a mediocre school to graduate, unless he just couldn't cut it academically at Rice? Now, he wants us to take medical advice from him? Um... That's a hard no. Hard no. So I feel very, very strongly that, uh, that you should have every single solitary right, including, including use of the, your gender identity bathrooms in public. The banner that John Henry put up on this clip says, pay attention to the full approval of immorality. Where? I don't see or hear anything immoral here. John Henry obviously has a problem with the transgender community. But what is it? What is immoral about being transgender? He hasn't supported his claim. It's impossible to point out his error when he makes assertions without evidence to back his claims, which is why Hitchens tells us that that which is asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. But what is he even saying is immoral? Transgender women using the restroom? Is it immoral to use a restroom? If so, all humans, even newborn infants, are immoral. I rarely see anyone complaining about trans men using the men's room, likely because it isn't unusual for cis women to use the men's room as well, due to issues with potty parity. Because it takes longer for a woman to go, and in designing restrooms, the men's restrooms usually have an equal number of stalls as the women's rooms, but the men's rooms also have urinals, so they can accommodate more people. Thus, the line is always longer for the women's room. 
The issue people claim to have with trans women in women's restrooms is that the trans woman might attack a cis woman. But trans women have been using women's restrooms for decades, and yet the fear mongers who make this claim can point to no case where this has ever happened. Trans women have far more to fear in using a restroom than cis women, as they are far more likely to be the victim of discrimination or abuse. The trope of transgender women claiming to be transgender to get into women's restrooms is just that. If a man wants to get into a woman's restroom, there are far easier ways to do it than go to a doctor, complain of dysphoria, get referred to a psychologist who evaluates you, counsels you, has multiple visits with you, then says gender-affirming care is appropriate for you. You then see a medical doctor who prescribes hormone therapy, you take your medication for several months, and then you look like a woman, you dress like a woman, and then you use the women's restroom. Do you seriously think that any man who identifies as a man will go to all that trouble to get into a woman's restroom when all he has to do is pick up a mop and a bucket and walk in like he's working there? Come on, man, get real. Thank you. God has let them have a reprobate mind. So when you see all of this transgender activity and when you see them want to make laws to protect transgender identity and you know it is absolute and total and utter insanity, you know we've reached the reprobate mind. People can't think reasonably, which means there's no way back to sanity. There's no way back. Okay, at least he made an attempt. So Henry's evidence that being transgender is immoral is that John MacArthur thinks that it is insane. Several problems here. First, where did MacArthur get his psychology degree? He didn't. Now this is interesting. He attended Bob Jones University while it was still an all-white school. They didn't admit any black students until they were ordered to do so in 1971. But he claims no bachelor's degree from any school. Instead, his only earned degree is an MDiv from Talbot Theological Seminary. The seminary also awarded him an honorary doctorate, but the MDiv is the only earned degree. Yet somehow, MacArthur considers himself a sufficient expert in psychology to declare the entire transgender community insane. It should be noted that insanity is actually a legal term, not a medical term. The medical term is mentally ill. Insanity is a legal finding that one, by reason of mental disease, is unable to determine right from wrong. If MacArthur was actually right, the solution would be to afford medical care to the community, not take it away from them. That's like diagnosing someone with cancer, but making cancer treatment illegal because you don't think it's good for them. Now, this idea really is insane. MacArthur clearly can't tell the difference between right and wrong, that if, if he were right, the entire transgender community all suffer from mental illness, then the solution is to deny them medical care. In what world does that make sense? In what world is it morally right to deny medical care to the ill? Even Jesus knew better than this. But don't get me wrong. Being transgender is not, I repeat, is not a mental illness. Those that say it is make it clear that they don't know what they're talking about and have not put in the time and study of reality to know what is going on. This is not the first time that MacArthur has tried to claim a right to dictate medical care. I did a video with my brother, a pharmacist, dismantling MacArthur's lies to his congregation about the vaccine when it was first made available to the public. My brother explained what the vaccine really is and why it is safe, while MacArthur ranted about conspiracy theories, demonstrating that he had no understanding of the medicine of the vaccine. Finally, there is the issue of glass houses. MacArthur's church knowingly protected a pedophile for years. I say knowingly because the man he protected was convicted of the crime. The man even confessed to other church members to attempted murder of his child. Yet MacArthur protected him and vilified the woman that brought the charges against him. 
MacArthur's church wanted this woman to forgive her husband and drop the charges. She had to flee to Texas, where she hid in silence until her children were grown. Now, the full story has come out. For more information on this, read the Royce Report series on the topic, linked in the description. And MacArthur has the audacity to call the transgender community immoral? Clean your own house, John, before you start pointing fingers. There was a time in this country a majority of people understood who God is to a degree and that instilled in them a certain level of reverence, a barrier, a line if you will, which this country would not dare to cross. Most people had a general idea of what is right and wrong. Many people had enough light and knowledge to know that the life of an unborn infant is precious. People understood what a man was and what a woman was. There was a sense of justice instilled in the heart of this nation, echoing throughout the entire world the words in God we trust. The United States of America, the greatest country in the world, the heart of the economy of the world, the best seminaries are in these United States of America. Some of the best books are written by American authors, some of the best thinkers, philosophers, the leading nation in healthcare and scientific discoveries. If there is a nation that God has smiled upon, it is surely this nation. That was quite the gish gallop. I'm not going to try to address all those claims mostly because not a single one of them is backed by any evidence. But more importantly, not a single one of them does anything to support the claim made in the title, that this video is about why one should not mock God. The closest that he comes to his complaint is that it's no longer true that most people revere God. But is there a reason to? Was there ever a reason to? I really think that the reason that most people revered God is that that was what they were taught and they were never given reason to question it. But in this information age, more people have enough information to question God claims. We no longer need gods for the gaps in our knowledge as the gaps keep growing smaller. And since no discovery has ever come to the conclusion that a god did anything, what reason is there to revere a god, particularly a god that never does anything? As to his claim that people no longer know right from wrong, why do you make this claim? Maybe the majority no longer agree with your subjective views on what is right and wrong. But why should anyone think that your views on what is right or wrong is better than theirs? If you are in the minority on what is immoral, you need to bring something to the table to back your claim that your view is the right one. Think he'll ever get to the mocking God part? But for the past 30 years, this great and flourishing nation has gone down the path of immorality, down the path of destruction, down the path of no return. I can, as it were, see the writing on the wall of this nation and the inscription spells out judgment. So Henry thinks the US started going downhill about 1990. I'm wondering if there was an event, a movement, or anything that happened around 1990 that changed the course for the U.S., and if so, what? A few weeks ago, I covered a video of Matt Powell's where he made similar claims, but he linked everything to 1963, the year the Supreme Court rightfully outlawed schools from forcing corporate prayer on students. wonder if Henry will tell us what he thinks caused the change. God has weighed this nation on his moral scale, and it came up empty. Oh, so your God is Osiris. Anubis brings the soul to Osiris who weighed the heart of the nation of the U.S. against his feather of truth and it came up empty? Actually, this is a reverse of the theology. The dead are supposed to confess that they have never done certain wrong things. The feather of truth then determines if the heart has spoken truthfully. If the heart is empty, free of these wrongdoings, the soul passes on to the field of reeds. But if the person lied, the heart proves heavier and it is thrown to the floor of the Hall of Truth, where it is devoured by Amenti, also known as Amut, a god with the face of a crocodile, the front of a leopard, and the back of a rhinoceros, also known as the Gobbler. Once Amenti devoured the person's heart, the individual soul then ceased to exist. Interestingly, one of the confessions is, I have not learned the things which are not. Guess that excludes Ken Ham as well as a long list of other apologists. 
This is a nation morally and spiritually bankrupt and empty. Empty of the fear of the Lord. Empty of compassion for the innocent in the womb. Empty of understanding. A nation claiming to be wise and full of knowledge, wealth, influence, and yet it is depraved and bound in darkness. I think he's just going to keep throwing out the innuendo that being a member of the LGBTQ community makes one depraved. Depraved is defined as morally corrupt, wicked. Please tell me why you think that all members of the LGBTQ community fall under this umbrella, particularly me. I am asexual. How is being asexual wicked or morally corrupt? Your own Bible praises abstinence from sex. So how am I wicked and morally corrupt? If you agree that it isn't, now explain why being gay is wicked or morally corrupt. What specifically is immoral about it? There is an agenda that is currently being rolled out for everyone to accept the lies of Satan. Many so-called Christians have already accepted and bought into the lies. That's why you have gay Christians, queer pastors, and homosexual churches. Wait, there are homosexual churches? Churches that have sexual preferences? Huh? That's a new one on me. Do the churches engage in sex, or do the people inside the church engage in sex? The Old Testament talked about temple prostitutes, but I didn't know that modern churches had any such things. I think you may have just found a way to bring people back into the fold. Sex at church? If you don't accept the current norms, if you don't play along, then you are automatically labeled a bigot and a racist, deserving of nothing less than to be canceled. Another trope. If you aren't gay, that's fine. You don't have to say that you support gay rights if you don't. What you don't get to do is discriminate or use slurs or call for violence against gay people. Engage in that conduct and you are a bigot and you deserve to be canceled. But simply disagree, then you have a right to your opinion, even if you are wrong. Same-sex marriage, homosexual marriage, it's not that anymore. What is it now? Marriage equality. I don't get where there's even an issue here. Yes, it's equal rights for all to marry the person or persons of their choice. That would be marriage equality. You want inequality. You want only your way to be legal, even if your way is not agreed upon by the majority. Look, you are free to think whatever you want to think about gay marriage. But your religious freedoms end where other people's rights begin. You have the absolute right to think and believe whatever you want to think and believe. But that is not a right to act freely on any belief that you might hold. You may only act on those beliefs that do not infringe on other people's rights. At least this was the law until our current Supreme Court started hacking away at this, weaponizing religious freedom and making Christianity the favored religious view in this country. For details on how this is happening, read American Crusade, How the Supreme Court is Weaponizing Religious Freedom by Andrew Seidel. A link is in the description. You do not have the right to enforce a minority view on the majority in the name of your religion. But that is exactly what Henry and Bauckham want to do, to claim in the name of moral superiority that people who do not believe as they do must live as if they do believe that way. Henry, you have the right to convince other people that you are right. But if this is the best you got, good luck with that. And all of these terms are designed to do the same thing. Number one, they're designed to disarm you. And number two, they're designed to make you sound like a wicked, evil person if you're against them. Right? No. They are designed to express the truth of their position, right? When the president of the most powerful nation in the world sits across from a transgender woman and congratulates him on an act that God clearly spells out as damning, you can be certain that we're not simply approaching a dark time. We are living in the middle of darkness. First, why did you misgender this woman? You recognized her as a woman, then you misgendered her. This can only be one thing, disrespect. Your intent is clearly to be derogatory and to disaffirm her human rights. No one who intentionally does this to another human being deserves to be heard.
I absolutely do not get why you think you get to stand on your soapbox claiming moral superiority and then you go and deliberately belittle another person who does not agree with you. How do you not see that you are the one acting immorally here? You don't have the decency to respect a fellow human being for who she is. Then, you claim that this is something that your God clearly spells out as damning. Where? The Bible? Show me where in the Bible it says any act of this woman is clearly spelled out as damning. Where is it? The closest you can get in the Bible to saying anything about being transgender is where God takes a rib from Adam and makes Eve. God takes a male body part and from it makes a female body. So if humans do the same, being imitators of God, where is the wrong? Was God immoral for making Eve from Adam? I question whether you have ever even read your Bible. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. That's clear. That's unambiguous. Do not consent. No one is asking you to. You believe what you want. You consent to do what you want and leave the rest of us alone. The problem lies in that you want those who don't agree with you, which is the majority of people, to consent to let you make the rules to run our lives. But guess what? We do not consent. And in a democracy, you can't rule over us without our consent. And we don't give it to you. Herein lies another issue. The Christian nationalists know that they have lost the culture war. They know they lost their majority status. So the game is now to disenfranchise us, to take away our ability to withhold consent by refusing to concede to lost elections, by making false claims about voter fraud, by intimidating people to prevent them from voting, by convincing you that your vote won't count. The Christian nationalists are attempting to take away your right to consent. This is the most fundamental building block of our democracy, that we are ruled by we the people. Not that we are ruled by a god or a favored minority, but we are ruled by we the people. It is impossible to overstate how important it is that we keep our right to vote. Gerrymandering is a backdoor way to disenfranchise black and other minority voters. There is even a movement among some fundamentalists to disenfranchise women. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. We do not consent to your minority view rule of this country. I'm skipping large segments, but thought this piece worth commenting on. Incest relationships are openly praised in TV shows and all kinds of deviant sexual behaviors are accepted and welcomed. Dude, again, have you even read your own Bible? Obviously, the Adam and Eve story, if true, they had sex with their brothers and sisters. Abraham married his half-sister. Lot had sex with his daughters. The Bible says to sell women to their rapists' as wives. Noah's grandchildren all had to marry their first cousins as there were no other people. God tells his people to take virgin girls as sex slaves. What is done in this country today is tame by comparison to what your God designed, condoned, and permitted in his Bible. The education system which is supposed to elevate, shape, and cultivate the mind of these children has introduced LGBTQ books as part of the education curriculum. This is evil. This is what happens when God abandons a nation. Now wait a minute. First, if this is what happens when God abandons a nation, then whose fault is this mess that you see yourself in? It sounds to me like God is at fault for abandoning the nation. Second, this video is supposed to be about why one should never mock God. We have yet to see any mockery yet. I want to see the mockery. The world forgets that there is a day appointed for every man to die, and after which they will appear before God to give a truthful account of who they truly are and what they have done in this body. We didn't forget that you think that. We just don't buy it. If you really want us to buy it, you need a reason for us to think it is true. And here, you don't have any. Okay, I found the mockery part. Here it is. Listen closely because it goes by fast. And those who rejected Jesus Christ mocked God and lived according to their fleshly desires. That's it. 
they lived according to their fleshly desires. How is this even mocking God? They aren't saying anything about God here. If believers are right that God makes people the way they are, then God made them with these fleshly desires. What kind of dumbass God makes a person, gives them fleshly desires, and then says, don't act on those desires I gave you because that would be mocking me? That's like giving a child a toy and say, don't play with that toy. The intelligent child asks, then why did you give it to me? The believer would say it's a test. A test for who? God is supposed to be omniscient. He already knows the result. A test of the character of the person he made? Since God already knew before he made the person if they would pass the test or not, his act of making them determined the result. If failing the test is mocking God, and God made the test, set all the parameters, including making sure that the person will fail, the only person mocking God is God himself. It just goes to show that whoever wrote Revelation didn't have the logical skills to see that if acting on human desire is mocking God, and God gave people that human desire, then no one is mocking God except God himself. We'll just step aside and let him mock himself into a little corner. Or better yet, just recognize that he was never real in the first place, because such a being fails his own test. I watched the rest, and there isn't any more mockery. Bummer. I still don't know why I should never mock God. I guess until someone comes up with a good reason, I will just continue to do it. Let the mockery commence and live your life. We're gonna mock around the clock tonight. We're gonna mock, mock, mock the broad daylight. We're gonna mock, gonna mock around the clock tonight. We have gay Christians, queer pastors, and homosexual churches. Wait, there are homosexual churches? Churches that have sexual preferences? Huh? That's a new one on me.